Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from creativecodingclub.com and today we're going to take a look at this fun little animation that's a bit trickier than it looks, alright? I did a little deep dive into the animation and tried to replicate it and I came across some pretty cool variations. So, let's take a deeper look. I first came across this animation on X in this post by Andreas Storm. And on first glance, you might just think, oh, the text is just scaling up character by character, and maybe there's some sort of like gradient that's passing through, all right? You'll notice that there's a bit of a shine that happens as the text grows. Now I'm gonna pause it, and that'll allow me to scrub through a bit slowly, okay? So here we have the text at its normal size, and you'll see that the H starts to brighten up and it's gonna come towards us, and then the eye, and then, you know, the other characters as well. And what I wanna point out here is that as the characters are growing, there's a sort of 3D bulge, all right? You'll almost see that the text looks like it's sort of curving towards us, all right? It's not just that each character is getting bigger. And also, as the characters are getting closer to us, they're not really getting terribly close together, all right? They're never overlapping. Now, as far as the shine goes, you know, you probably could do something funky with SVG where you have a mask and a gradient moving behind. Um, but what I found through some experimenting is that if you just tweak the brightness of each character as it's growing, you're going to get it pretty close, all right, or at least close enough. So I just want you to pay attention to the fact that there's definitely this sort of wave effect, or what I'm calling the bulge, okay? So keep that in mind as I show you my few attempts at this. So my first attempt was just to stagger a simple scale with the brightness of the color changing, all right? And I thought it looked pretty good, but it lacked some of the actual bulge that I wanted. So I added this version down below that has a little bit of 3D rotation thrown in. When it moves fast, you can almost miss it, but if we go back to, let's say, around here, if you pay attention, you'll see that in the scale version, the top and the bottom of the E are totally flat, but here you'll see we're getting that 3D distortion here. We almost get a nice curve in what I'm calling the bulge here, okay? And if we go back to like, you know, here, you can definitely see the E, A, and T are on this upward angle, all right? And although it's subtle, I thought it made enough of a difference to pursue it just a bit further. So I created some variables that I can configure the stagger with. If we bring this down to like a 0 0.1, there's less time between the start of each character's animation. And what that gives you is you can get to a point where almost the entire phrase has that bulge going on. Going the other way, if we make the each value say 0 0.5, you're only seeing a few characters. And again, it looks very similar to the scale version, but I think it adds just enough pizzazz to make it worth it. We can play with the rotation Y value. If we crank it up too high, it gets a little weird. So I like it somewhere in the 30s. Ah, and to make it just a little extra funky, we can throw in a rotation X2, maybe a different value. And there you go. That's definitely a bit interesting. And with GS Dev Tools, of course, we can slow it down or speed it up. Let's do it at half speed. And there you go. It's almost sort of like a liquidy distortion, all right? Pretty neat. And although I sort of missed the mark on replicating the source animation, I just love how scripted animation with GSAP allows you to play with these different variables and very quickly stumble into some pretty cool variations. Hey folks, Carl Schroof here. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do all that YouTube stuff like comment, like, subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. Now, if you want to learn more about GSAP or increase your skills as a creative coder, please check out my full GSAP course bundle at creativecodingclub.com. Each week I create a new lesson for my students, which has allowed me to create a collection of over 250 GSAP lessons for all my students for a very low price, all right? So I've worked with GSAP for years, okay? I've helped thousands of people in the Green Sock forums, and I've really sort of figured out what it is that beginners stumble with, all right? So I want you to avoid all those common pitfalls and really enjoy the experience of bringing your artwork to life with code, all right? So please, just check out the courses, it's a great way to support the channel, and I know you're going to learn a ton. See you in the club. 
I made a few tweaks to the demo, which will allow me to further configure some properties for the animation. But before we get there, I just want to point out that my Creative Coding Club text is inside of a heading one with an ID of rotate. So what we need to do is break that apart into characters by calling on split text.create. We're going to pass in the rotate selector and break it into characters. And what that's going to do is wrap each character in its own div. So what we're doing with this next set is we're targeting all those child divs and we're going to set their transform perspective based on the perspective value that we are setting in this variable here. The lower this value, the more pronounced the 3D distortion will be. So if I set this down to something like 50, that looks a little crazy, right? So we don't want that. If we make it 500, you don't really see the bulge all that much. It's really subtle. So again, with some playing around, I liked 180, but there are times when you're going to want to change it. So I'm gonna make it easy to do in one place. Now, as far as the animation goes, I have a timeline up here called Rotate TL, and there are only one, two, three stagger tweens in the timeline, all right? The first one, handles animating the Z property, which brings the text towards us on a 3D plane, and animating the color to the end color, which is hopefully going to be a brighter color in most cases for the shine. And we're gonna stagger this along for each character. The next tween here is going to animate the rotation Y to whatever value we specify in the variable. And the last one is going to animate a negative rotation Y. So before I explain the code further, I really think it'll be helpful to just watch it on a single character. So where it says Creative Coding Club up here, I'm just going to type in an X. And in the CSS, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and we're going to make the font size, we'll say uh, 20 viewport width units. So we should here now have just a very large X animating. Woo, there we go. So now let's just comment out the rotation tweens here and focus on the first one here. And all you have is an X that comes towards us, gets brighter, and then goes back down to its starting state. So what's happening is in the stagger object, we are setting a repeat value to one. So we're just tweening up to these values and then back down. Now it's important to note the duration here. If the duration of this tween is one and we have a repeat of one, it's going to take two seconds for the entire animation of the X growing and shrinking to play. Which brings me into the next part here where we have our rotation set on the Y axis. Let's enable this next tween here. And here you'll see we're doing a rotation Y tween. Right now I think it's set to 35 degrees. Our rotation X is set to zero. But I wanna point out that the duration is duration divided by two. And there's also a repeat of one on here. So remember, we said that this animation has a total duration of two, including the repeat. And if duration is one, we divide that by two, we get 0 0.5. And if we repeat it though, that is a total duration of one. So what that means is that for the first part of the animation, we're going to be repeating the rotation values here. So you're gonna notice that as the X scales towards me, you'll see that it rotates to that 35, and then when it gets to full Z or right at us, you'll notice that the rotation totally changes, all right? It goes back down to zero. And then when the X shrinks, there's no rotation happening at all, all right? So all that to say that this tween here does everything it needs to do only as the X is growing towards us. On the way back down, it just has no rotation at all. So that's where the next tween comes in, where we're going to do a negative rotation Y. And same for the rotation X if we are using it. And what's important to note here is that the position parameter is set to whatever the duration is, okay? So if the duration of the first tween was one for one iteration, that's when this one is going to start. Again, this one's total duration is one, and then this one's gonna start, boom, right after that, based on that duration. So let's give this a go. And there you go, that's the animation for one character. You'll see that as it grows, we get that rotation Y to 35, 
it zeroes out when it's full size, and then we rotate to negative 35. The left edge is going back down, okay? And then it also repeats to get that zero rotation at the end. So I always recommend that when you're building animations or exploring other people's animations, you know, feel free to comment some stuff out and just go through it line by line. So that's the animation on one character. And now what we can do is go back to our CSS. We can change the font size back. And in the HTML, we can also put Creative Coding Club back in. And now you'll see all the tweens applied to all the characters. So again, it's just a timeline with one, two, three different staggered animations with some pretty you know, precise timing. I completely encourage you to go in here and play with some of the variables, all right? The duration here is the duration for each character's animation. So if we make that, say, 0 0.8, it's going to slow things down quite a bit. We'll watch that again without my sound effect. All right? Hey, that might be exactly what you need. If you want to add some rotation X in there, as I showed you before, just put some numbers in and play around with it. Hmm, getting wavy. Personally, I like the duration a little bit quicker. Bump up the each value a little bit as well. And now you get something like that. Probably still a bit slow, all right? I really think we need this down somewhere around 0.2. And if the duration and the each value are the same, you're going to see every character animate fully on its own before the next one comes in. So we'd probably take this down a step as well. We can take the Z and increase it, bring the text closer to us, and maybe try to bring the perspective down a little bit, but not as much as I had done earlier. Whoa, probably too much. Let's stick around that 180. Very nice. And as you may have guessed, since I'm using responsive units, the effect is totally responsive, no shenanigans, no extra coding required, all right? It's just beautiful. You know, if you want to play around with the color, make it orange, and then decide that might not be exactly what you want. But I think you've seen enough of this now, so I'm going to leave this file with you for you to play around with on your own. And if you come up with any cool variations, please send them my way. And lastly, as a little bonus, I love this effect so much, I created an effect called Bold Shine. You'll see here that I'm splitting one, two, three different headings into characters. And what I'm doing is just passing those character arrays into the Bold Shine effect. So by just passing in split one here, what I'm going to get is the first heading is going to animate with the default settings. You'll see that the text turns white when it grows. All right, that's the default color. But what I can do here is add in a config object with a color, and now you'll see I'm using that brighter pink. For the next line, I'm gonna add some more config options, a custom color, custom duration, each Z and rotation X values. Now, wait for it. Woo! You see that? That second line with GS Dev Tools, we can just scrub back to the beginning and play again. Pretty neat. And for something more subtle with the third line here, check this out. So we have the first line, the second line, and ah, something a little bit more subtle at the end here. Very nice. Now, I've already had a lesson on how to create your own effects using Register Effect. But really quickly from the top here, what we're going to do is call gsap.registereffect. We give it a name. Extend Timeline is going to allow us to use the effect directly on timelines. And most of the magic is here in the defaults, all right? If I don't pass anything into the effect, these are all the default settings. But my config object will override any of them. And then here, we define the effect. We've passed in the targets. We set their transform perspective. And this is all just pretty much the same timeline I just went through with you. But instead of having those variables, we're going into the config object and pulling everything out. So it may look like a bit of work, but once you do it once, it's so easy to reuse, okay? So again, I've split up three different headings. And now on my T timeline, I'm just calling t.boldshine. Let's crack this open again play it from the top and just sit back woo, and enjoy the wonder. 
So if you haven't done my register effect lesson, I strongly recommend that you check it out. It's really super helpful when you want to experiment with different values when you're creating new effects and maybe you want to share them with clients. So thanks again for all your support and I hope you've learned a lot today and we'll start using this effect in your own projects. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tour. I don't want to keep you much longer, but I do want you to know that I worked at Greensock back when this was their logo, okay? I was there when they started transitioning from Flash to JavaScript and I was learning most of these tools before documentation even existed, all right? So I'm just creating lessons that I wish I had when I was learning this stuff, all right? I've taught thousands of developers how to master the basics of GSAP and use all their special tools, all right? I've been doing this for over 10 years, and uh, although the lessons might not always be the prettiest or the fanciest, I really want you to master the fundamentals so that when you see effects online, you can say, hey, you know what? I know what tools I need to build that, all right? So there's this old saying that says, if you wanna learn how to build a house, grab a hammer and follow a home builder around for six months. Well, through my Creative Coding Club courses, that's basically what I'm allowing you to do, okay? I want you to jump in, do the lessons just a little bit each week, and you'll have an opportunity to see just how I would build these things, all right? I'll show you step by step. We'll look at the CSS, the HTML. I'll teach you some basic JavaScript tricks along the way. You don't have to be a front-end expert for this stuff, all right? I'm gonna keep it simple, but you're gonna be amazed at the results if you put in the time. So I welcome you to check out these courses and discover the joy of animating with code. See you in the club.